guys, Anne Marie here today with a card process video. I kind of batch made these three cards for Mother's Day. Um, I had started with the three solid sheets of cardstock that I included in my counterfeit kit, and I had three kind of basic colors. And I had chosen those colors based on some letters that I knew I was going to use, but also they were represented in a sheet of butterflies that I had that I knew I was going to fussy cut and use. So that's where the colors came from. And then I cut these sheets to five by seven and ran them through to emboss them. My embossing folder, however, is a four by six. So I ran each panel through twice. So I ran the bottom of the panel sideways in my embossing folder and then I ran the top of my panel sideways through the embossing folder and no this is not perfect um, there is kind of an obvious not crease but an obvious line where the two um, embossed parts meet up and they don't match but I just wanted to give some overall texture to the base I knew I was going to be building a bunch of stuff on top of this in the center so it's really almost more about getting the overall texture across the whole card um, and not so much about making it look like a convincing um, solidly embossed piece with a continuing pattern. It was really just more giving that impression since it's going to run underneath and be the foundation for all of my pieces yet to come. I thought it was still a very lovely effect. Um, it, it did what I needed it to do. It's going to give that continuous embossed pattern all around like a frame. So I was happy with that. And um, I went ahead and just did that to all three bases, including this textured cardstock, which maybe I could have just left it since it was textured. But I, like I said, I was batch making and I just decided to kind of keep everything consistent and do the same thing for all three cards. But anyway, so there's my three textured backgrounds. I'm gonna lay those out and start piling up all the goodies from my kit that I feel coordinate or go well with these colors. And I'm separating out all of my goodies into my color schemes. So I knew, you know, the different colors I wanted to use. I knew I wanted to pile a lot of bits and pieces on. And so I just piled. So I had gotten a lot of my smaller pieces. I moved on to larger scraps that I felt coordinated with this. For this, I, I did deep, like, you can see my phone, look at that. <laughs> um, I did do a little bit of a dive into my scrap bag and just pulled anything that kind of went. Um, and I did kind of keep pulling other things out, thinking I would, you know, still try to work with these letters. Um, but I, at this point, I kind of knew I was going to have to maybe uh, go a different direction. So I also um, knew that I wanted to use butterflies, and I was figuring I'd probably use three fussy cut butterflies on each card. So I'm just looking over this whole sheet, and I'm finding ones that match uh, the different letters and color schemes I have going for all the cards. And I'm doing a rough cut for each one so that I can just kind of assign it to the appropriate pile. Now I just needed to neaten up my piles. So I am trimming all of my scraps down so that there's no weird or rough edges um, and kind of blocking them out. I did do some where I just tore because I knew this was going to have like kind of a shabby chic um, layered effect. And so I was probably going to do some tearing and distressing and inking and I liked the extra texture and softness that tearing uh, paper adds. So um, I also like cleaned up my butterflies at this point and actually did the fussy cutting for those. So um, I've never made a secret of the fact that I love to fussy cut. I just really enjoy it. It's very relaxing and satisfying to me to do. And so I have released a couple of shorts. It's just something I'm playing around with. I've been interested in short videos for a while, but um, I just, I don't know. I never seem to 
figure out exactly what I want, want to do with them. But <laughs> I ended up fussy cutting like the whole rest of the page of these butterflies at some point and decided I would just make little shorts of me fussy cutting each individual butterfly. So if it's something you're interested in, you might check them out. It was kind of fun because I guess since it was my first short video, YouTube like boosted it a little more widely than it normally would. And so I got a lot of views on the first one. Um, and then the second one, I didn't get nearly as many views, but it's still way more views than I usually get. And um, it was interesting because I had a much higher percentage of like likes, thumbs up on them. And so I think YouTube really kind of refined who they offered it to on the second video. So I'm really curious to see um, what will happen this week when I send out my third short video. Um, but I'm hoping to do a few of those and a few kind of those relaxing, fussy cutting type videos. Um, and then eventually I want to have like a compilation of a longer kind. So maybe fussy cutting is like not your personal thing, but maybe you still enjoy watching it or maybe you don't. And then you can just, you know, obviously skip those. <laughs> because, um, but I really enjoy it. And so I thought the videos were kind of fun to make. And I've also been playing around a little bit with making my own music to accompany it, which is, it's again, this is like the stats kind of geek in me. Um, YouTube kind of prefers you to use original audio on your shorts. It limits you to 15 seconds of their audio, even though like for my intro and outro here and my um, organization videos, I use all YouTube royalty free music and it's long form, you know, it's several minutes long for each piece and they're okay with that. But on the shorts, for some reason, they only went 15 seconds. So I just experimented with kind of building my own, just using loops right now and some original like pieces, but starting with loops. And uh, that's been kind of fun too. But then when I went to upload it on Instagram, they completely prefer you to be using their trending audios. So they want you to use their audio and they want you to use their audio for the whole thing. So, um, it like kind of hurt my video that I had original audio on it that nobody else has. That's kind of like not what they want you to do. <laughs> so it's just really interesting and kind of fascinating to, um, to me to kind of see how the algorithms on the different platforms work and handle videos and react to different factors, you know? So I haven't bothered to upload the second one over on Instagram as a reel. Um, but if I do, I'm going to attach it to a trending audio. So I don't know. Um, leave me a comment below if you check out reels or shorts, if you enjoy videos like that, like TikToks. There's a few scrapbooking TikToks um, out there that people do. And if like they'll journal in real time or they'll make cards, not in real time, it's sped up, but they'll like build a journal page. Um, and I do think they're really interesting. I just don't know yet if they're for me. I really enjoy these longer form ones, I think. But the fussy cutting, relaxing, ASMR type video, I do kind of enjoy those. So I don't know. It's just fun to play around and, you know, try different things. All right. So I have my kind of little pile of goodies and I knew I wanted to use this little pocket die that I had from Spellbinders. And um, it cut kind of a curly, intricate little pocket. I wanted to cut it out of gold foil and then pile up things kind of inside and on top of this little pocket that it created. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a few of these. Um, I believe initially I was thinking I would cut them all with the gold cardstock, but I ended up doing one with vellum um, and using that on the gold or the yellow card. Sorry. I need to get one of those rolly brush tools to weed because it would definitely be faster. This is one of those things too. This is probably would be very satisfying to watch somebody else do this. However, is not relaxing to me. <laughs> um, this gets a little frustrating to me because I feel like my dyes don't always cut thoroughly. I'm sure it's user error. Um, but even when I use like the pre precision plate, it doesn't seem like I'm getting the best cuts all the time. Um, probably cause I need to replace like my cutting pads and stuff maybe. All right. So everything's weeded <laughs> and kind of trimmed down and piled up. And I essentially know what I'm doing on each card now. 
So I'm going to start actually building the pieces. So I'm going to start with my pink one. I'll set the other two to the side and just pull up everything that I need for just my pink card. So I start with some edge distressing. I'm going to also quickly ink the edges for a brief moment in time. I thought I would ink the raised embossing, but it was a disaster. So I just flipped my panel over. It's going to be the part that gets glued down and um, I just went on with my card. My giant wheel of foam tape that I hate so much, but I'm going to use, it has gone missing. So <laughs> I'm using some fun foam scraps here and I'm just trimming them down into strips and I'm just gonna use my regular old ATG to stick these down and to be the foam adhesive. I did get sick of this after um, this card, however. So the next two cards, I didn't even bother with the foam. There was plenty of texture and dimension with all the layers as it was. And so it just really wasn't necessary. I already had to mail these in padded envelopes um, that cost more to mail any card I've ever mailed before. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, we didn't need the foam. So I'm just layering that piece behind the pocket and then I trimmed the bottom since the gold foil is rounded. I just trimmed off the little corners of the pattern paper that stuck out behind it. And then I um, had a little scrap that I thought would fit well in there. I trimmed it to kind of almost look like a tag that would be tucked in there. Um, and I'm just kind of playing with tucking in some other ephemera pieces that were in my kit and that um, coordinated with this color scheme. And I'm just tucking them in so you can kind of see like the little interesting bits and pieces and deciding on where I wanted all of my homes to be. I did have that aqua in the background piece for the pocket and then there was some pretty turquoise foil on um, that pink butterfly and so I pulled in a little scrap of the turquoise notepad paper too. I had some really beautiful vintage lace in my kit, um, but I wasn't loving it kind of across and through the middle. So I thought instead I'd have it on top of that tag piece that I first put in the pocket um, and it would be coming off of that. And so I used my ribbon slot punch at the top and wove the, is that the right word? <laughs> put <laughs> the lace through the hole um, at the top and then that's a really nice way for that to lay flat um, and then I was able to embellish with a wooden heart bingo marker um, it's very ancient from Jenny Boland studio um, and there was just a perfect little home for it where normally if I'd had to tie a knot there wouldn't have been um, a good place to put that so it wouldn't be by Anne Marie if I didn't have to tear half of it up. <laughs> so I had gotten the butterflies and the letters stuck down and everything and remembered, oh yeah, I have these big rhinestone swirls <laughs> that I wanted to use too. And I have, you know, plenty of space to use them. So I was determined to um, find ways to tuck these in. And of course that meant like, see, yeah, I had to just like heave ho a bunch of stuff up so that then the little rhinestone sparkles could kind of peek out um, from underneath all the layers. So then I just added a couple more little pieces tucked underneath the other side, the other butterfly, and then card one is finished. And then it is on to card two. I did mount to these onto um, five and a half by seven and a half inch card bases. So there is like a little extra quarter inch strip of white running around all of these in the finished products. I do not have pictures of those, however, because um, I made a deal with myself. If I finish these on Monday of that week so that I could get them mailed by Wednesday, I was gonna let myself go to the Leon Bridges concert on Tuesday. <laughs> so, um, what that meant was Wednesday, I was still really like in a hurry to get these out. So I just smacked them on their card bases and wrote what I wanted to write and then got them to the post office like early Thursday morning. And the concert was amazing. Um, so 
it was worth it, I guess. <laughs> and this really worked a treat to motivate me. But it really is more of the same. I'm just beginning with a larger background layer that I'm building a pocket, this time with vellum. And I'll round those corners off, start layering some pieces inside, including a tag for the lace ribbon, and then start layering pieces on the outside. Instead of the little wooden bingo marker here, I'm going to use a vintage glass button. And I, um, I'm just going to use some wood adhesive for this, some multi-matte medium. And then I kind of uh, roughly lay out what I think I'm going to do. I go ahead and ink my edges and I start sticking everything down. I just used a lot of glue dots for these. Um, I also kind of tucked the lace pieces under where I wanted them to stick. Um, <laughs> You'll see in the very, very, very last photo, I didn't do that with the little blue card front. And I did before I mailed it because it's kind of funny. It's just like throwing up its hands in the air, just like shocked. The little lace ribbon is, <laughs> but I like, <laughs> I like the lace ribbon coming down more. So now we're moving on to the final card, which is the turquoise and blue card. And again, kind of the same process. I've done some edge distressing. I'm laying down a large block, layering a pocket backed with pattern paper and then the edge is rounded. And then I'm going to tuck a tag for the lace ribbon and some other little bits and pieces inside the pocket. And then layered um, fussy cut butterflies on the outside of the pocket. Almost forgot the rhinestones again, but but I didn't. I managed to <laughs> to do them um, well before I was as far along as I was on the yellow card. <laughs> and then I just tucked in one little last piece that says "Oh Happy Day," um, and you can kind of see what I'm talking about there with the lace ribbon just going whoa, <laughs> sticking up on the sides. <laughs> but I did fix that before I mailed it so that it is down. Um, like the close-ups will show and like the other two cards are. And that was it. So those were my Mother's Day cards. Um, just a little more, you know, futzing with some rhinestones. Um, cause I'm going to keep sticking rhinestones down, I think as long as I can. Um, but these were really out of my comfort zone. These were way more full of stuff than I normally do. They were, um, just a lot more layers than I normally do. Uh, it's for some reason I prefer really linear, almost formulaic cards. And these were kind of formulaic too, right? I followed the same formula for each. However, um, I just really um, kind of try to loosen up and kind of go with the flow more as far as what layers I used and how I stacked them and where I placed things. And it was fun, different, but fun. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider leaving a thumbs up or subscribing. I'm super close to 200 followers, so I would appreciate it. Um, and I will see you on Wednesday with a short and on Friday with the weekly wrap up. Bye.